everyone so um, we're going to go through the question and answers that we've got I've only got five questions which is easy and an update of what's going on here in the Saab de Lome. Uh, it's uh, raining and a bit miserable here but anyway we uh, spoke to Jean-Luc and uh, we've got a new ETA which you may have seen uh, on the Facebook post it's now set for 10 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday the 29th so uh, it was looking like he was going to come in during the night um, but uh, we had a chat with uh, Lionel his manager who is now right alongside John Luke they took off uh, uh, not two days ago about 36 40 hours ago or something in a big uh, power cat and they're alongside uh, just to follow him in and uh, makes a link for the media as well that might want to talk to Jean-Luc as he's approaching. So uh, more on that in a minute. One thing I'd just like to point out is that we just posted uh, up on Facebook this, um, uh, this uh, official poster, GGR poster. You've seen them all before. And if you look there, you'll see this one is signed by Sir Robin Knox Johnston right over his portrait, as well as uh, Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc has signed over his portrait there. All of the entrants have signed it. Uh, so there's 18 entrants. And uh, I've even signed it with the official GGR stamp. So that's pretty cool. And uh, if you want that, that poster, um, just put your, uh, your, top, your best bid um, in the comment section below. And I forget when it closes. I think that one closes uh, when uh, Jean-Luc gets in. So um, that's a priceless little memento of the race. The other one that we just dropped in is um, Jean-Luc has one of these Citran teddy bears. Okay, You've probably seen, this is our office bear. This one's uh, the Citran GGR office bear. Okay, This is actually Kevin Fairbrothers. He, he um, sold his boat, but I, I got the bear off. But Jean-Luc has one on board. Uh, it's been doing the whole trip, and we've also put that up on uh, uh, a post on Facebook. If you want to adopt Jean-Luc's bear, uh, there's an opportunity for you to do that as well. Quite a classic uh, uh, memento of Jean-Luc's trip. So um, think about that as well. So within the race, um, Tapio's got another storm arriving, uh, but it's blowing itself apart. So uh, hopefully by the time it gets to him later today or tonight, it'll be down to about maybe, he might be gusting 50 knots, but it is all dropping out, so we're not expecting any dramas. He's good at heavy weather now, and um, he's got a lot of faith in his boat, so have we. It's an interesting point about his boat. It's really low freeboard, and uh, so basically there's not a lot of impact zone for waves to hit it, and even he's mentioned a few times that these big seas are just going straight over the boat. Um, so. And he, he's, yeah, he says the boat's really stable. He's never been worried or concerned, touch wood. Uh, he's got an incredibly strong rig. So, um, so all's well for the moment with Tapio. Then there's about a week of no storms. And he's uh, just under 1,000 miles now from Cape Horn. It's taking him quite a while to get around, but uh, we'll look forward to it when he does. Uh, Uku and Istvan has been pretty straightforward now. They're both in trade wind sailing, uh, best place to be, and making reasonable time. Uh, Uku is going to arrive at the doldrums in a couple of days and the doldrums have opened up quite a lot. You might have seen that if you've been watching the, the live tracker update I did this morning. So that'll slow him down quite a lot and it looks really quite a wide area. You can't tell what happens in the doldrums. It's all squalls and thunderstorms and lightning and so on. So he'll be challenged. And at that point, Istvan will be coming up again from behind. So he could close the gap again there. Um, still, he'll end up... Uh, you know, by the time Uku gets through, I reckon um, you know, he might end up with 600, 700 miles away. So uh, if something goes wrong there, he could be grappling at the, the, the podium position. We just have to see. Uh, but we're not expecting any surprises on both of them in the trades. Now to the, and then now to the main game. The big surprise for uh, Jean-Luc uh, yesterday was we knew he was going to slow down in the uh, lighter winds of the uh, trough that came out from the centre of the high. Uh, the day before but in reality what happened was it actually stopped him and a lot of people i got i got a heap of emails and messages saying oh what's happened to john luke you know he dropped his mast he stopped and and that's because they're not putting the uh, the wind overlay on and they just see his course stop but it was all wind driven it has uh, slowed him up he's probably um got uh, he probably lost about another 40 miles or something uh, in relation to mark uh, mark was already set to catch ground and he did he uh, he's now within uh, he was within about uh, uh, I think it was 320 miles or something of Jean-Luc. The winds arrived back. Now they're both Jean-Luc and Mark are in the same wind gradient. Um, but Jean-Luc is going to interact with the strong uh, winds coming through from that storm coming down from the northwest. And he's still going to get hit pretty hard. Um, he'll still face the, the main part of it tomorrow morning probably. 
and it could go 50, 55, gusting more. Seas are definitely going to get up. They're going up to about uh, 9 metres, and these are Bay of Biscay seas, not the long, open uh, uh, Southern Ocean stuff, and it could get quite challenging. I'm not sure. His manager turned up today, as I mentioned, uh, so they're in a big power cat. They're going to have some fun as well. Um, but the discussion that took place today between Jean-Luc, Lionel and myself was that um, the arrival now is set for morning of the Tuesday. They don't want to arrive in the dark. Uh, whether they have to slow up a bit or, or not at the last minute, it's hard to say. Uh, probably not, because the way these things usually go, as someone's crossing the, you know, closing the finish line, there's always these last minute delays and there's a bit of uncertainty on the weather for the last 90 miles. But we're very confident that he, he should, touch wood, <laughs> arrive on Tuesday. So if you're planning to be down here, that's all a good thing. Uh, if you're here, uh, we you know there are a lot of things happening here on the Vendée Marina. We've got the race village over here, uh, which you've probably seen uh, the setup there. And uh, everyone goes out, uh, checks him out. The line is very distinct. It's running off the uh, uh, the end of the um, eastern breakwater, goes down to the South Cardinal Mark to set up a transit. And then the line itself starts from there, goes for two miles. Jean Luc will take his finish time. So will we. And then after that, he's got no fuel, so he'll get a tow, and he'll tow in from there. There'll be a reasonable spectator fleet. It's the middle of winter, all the boats packed up, but it should be uh, uh, pretty cool. And uh, then he'll come down to the marina here, he'll do a lap of honour um, around the marina, because uh, on the Vendée Marina, we, we're expecting there could be quite a few people. And then uh, he'll stay alongside the, the marina, crack the mum champagne, and, and then head up uh, after about 20 minutes into the race village. And there uh, he'll wait, he'll go and sit and relax for five minutes while all the people come off the marina and wherever they are and stream into the area of the race village. There's a, a stage there and so on. And then um, uh, when everyone's in, they'll get caught up on a stage with Sir Robin. Sir Robin's flying in tomorrow night. Um, and that's a classic. You've got Sir Robin, the winner of the first Golden Globe race, and then if John Luke does get to the line to first touch wood, you've potentially got the winner of, of this second edition together. And it'll be quite something to hear them interact. They're great mates as well. They've known each other for a long time, um, so that'll be fun to watch. Uh, then after that stage uh, deal there, which could go for half an hour or so, I've got no idea, um, Jean-Luc will have a bit of a break for 30 minutes. He's going to come back here to the office and we'll take a portrait, which is we'll do for all of the entrants when they finish immediately before they have a shower and, and uh, spruce up. After that, he'll have a rest and have it because he will have been talking for a while. Uh, then he goes back to the international press conference in the village and uh, uh, that'll go for however long it takes. I'm not sure. It'll, um, it'll be quite interesting because he'll be uh, talking in depth um, about some of the issues and things that happen. The, um, the reason I've explained all that is to now I'll give you a rundown on what's happening with the live GGR here. First of all, we'll do the normal thing. When, when they're coming in, before he gets to the line, we'll be out there uh, talking live. We've got one stream going on GGR Facebook. It'll be in both English and French. So I'll be speaking English. Uh, Christoph's out on a camera boat. He's got his own boat. He'll be zipping off offshore uh, to take photos. So um, Ada uh, is going to help us with the French translations. So we'll both be talking together. You know, I'll talk some English. Ada will talk some French. Um, we'll be with Robin Knox Johnson and we'll be with uh, Yannick Moreau on the same boat. So Robin will be giving some commentary and uh, Yannick from uh, Le Sable de Lone here, who's uh, you know, representing our biggest partner, Le Sable de Lone, uh, who have been absolutely fantastic. And, and it'll be quite an interesting conversation in, in many ways. We'll um, then transfer as they come across the finish line and head down towards the, um, uh, down the river where there may be a few people on the sides of the river there. We'll transfer to a rib then and uh, get up close alongside John Luke and give a bit of an interview uh, live again here on Facebook as it's going down. At the uh, marina, when we get to the marina, we'll um, actually uh, do the same thing. It'll be live. Uh, we might be stopping and starting a few times. And then on the stage presentation, when uh, uh, Jean-Luc is talking with um, uh, Robin, uh, that'll be on live as well. And then it'll shut down for a while. When we come back to the press conference, it'll be a multi-camera live like you've seen us do in the uh, in the. Um, uh, in our uh, media centre here, you know, when we do the updates with, with Mark and Jean-Luc, um, it'll be interactive and the press conference will be in English and French, okay, so because uh, there's international media there. I failed to mention the commentary that we do on the stage presentation, once he gets off the boat, 
That'll be predominantly in French because um, you know we don't have a lot to say with the commentary and it's all about the French people. Um, so there will be some translated English. Uh, Robin speaks quite you know fluent French, so uh, uh, Robin and Jean Luc will be uh, interacting in French, I'd imagine. There, uh, when I'm up there, if I say something, someone's got to translate that. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, so uh, plenty of things to watch out for there, and it'll it'll go on pretty constantly because I know there's a lot of people interested in what's happening. Um, so what's happening with Mark? Um, and, it's, and I've got to say again, it's not over until it's finished. I mean, anything can happen. Um, so I'm not suggesting for a minute that Jean-Luc has already won this race, all right? Um, Mark's been doing really well. He's going to have a dream run with the weather all the way in, maybe until the last little bit. So he's not going to get involved with this storm that Jean-Luc's got. Uh, he'll just be constant speeds. You know, he'll be probably making sevens most of the time. And uh, it'll, it looks like it'll be about 240 miles or so behind Jean-Luc, if Jean-Luc streams in clear. Um, and that puts him in sometime Thursday. Um, and as I say, the only thing that looks a bit challenging might be the weather in the last 24 hours or so. There's a few things happening there, but it's a bit far out to get too specific. Um, but yeah, I'd say uh, he'll be in sometime on, uh, sometime on Late when did I say I forget what I said then late Wednesday or early Thursday that's that's um, you know but watch this space so so he's doing pretty well um, the uh, what else have I got here that's uh, we'll probably get into the questions and some other things might pop up so plenty going on and um, uh, yeah a bit of excitement there's some um, some good coverage all around the world on on all sorts of stuff right now as well one thing I will say I'm still laughing at some things I see in in some of them I mean there's one. Italian magazine at the moment, but there's a few people, you know, still that don't understand the concept of what the GGR is. And I'll just keep it as simple as this. GGR is not a normal yacht race. It's an adventure around the world. The only rules that we have are for collision regulations, and that's like rule of the road in your car. Um, that's called International Regulation for Prevention of Collision at Sea. There are no sail racing rules, and all the other rules in our notice of race are based around keeping the concept as similar as we can get it towards the, what was the original GGR. So, um, so you know, we accept the fact that uh, uh, it takes a bit to understand that, that you know, a lot of it uh, is fine detail in the notice of race, but we're very confident right up until the moment, right now, no entrants have cheated anywhere. Uh, no entrants are interested in cheating. Um, all the entrants, you know, well, uh, let's just say the key entrants have cleared with us, me, on the phone months ago uh, exactly what they can and can't do on the radio and no one has given me any proof anywhere that anyone has breached any radio regulations. So, uh, But it is difficult for some people out there to understand what's going on. Um, but anyway, we're confident that no one has cheated. So uh, uh, that should hopefully clear the air on that one. Um, so I've got a couple of questions here. Uh, Margaret Keyes would like to know, basically wants to know what's the definition of routing, weather routing. This is a really interesting subject. The bottom line is you can get weather reports from anywhere you like. You can say over here in this latitude and longitude, that's particular weather. Over there you've got this and 24 hours later that's going to happen there and on this side of that latitude that's going to happen, this is going to happen. And that's all fine. That's weather reporting. Weather routing is then if someone tells the skipper to go, right, I want you to go now to this latitude and longitude or I want you to steer a course uh, of uh, due east for 36 hours or 12 hours and then alter the course there, that's weather routing and that's not allowed. But you can have any number of personal personalised weather reporting, um, but you can't tell the skipper where to go. You can't give him clear directions and say, right, you have to go here and do this, that and the other. So um, it's a very simple principle. Um, okay, so I've got one here uh, from, uh, whoop, can't see the name. Uh, it didn't print up. Anyway, uh, just saying a comprehensive film on the GGR representing history, preparation, all aspects of sailing, life on board, as well as an evaluation of the boats, their design, construction, rigging based on experience made would be of great interest. And of course, a book on this great adventure would be the best gift for Christmas. Um, well, the documentary is happening. Jesse and Tina are here now. Uh, they flew in a couple of days ago, getting ready to film all the finish and so on. It's been ongoing for a long time. We've got some amazing footage and bits and pieces. And uh, now we've just got to try and we're trying to secure funding to, to actually produce that and cut it. Uh, but that kind of documentary and, and background there is you're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of euros, if not if not a million, you know, for many, many programs, which is what we wanted to do in the beginning. It didn't happen. We didn't get the support. Now we're running it down and we're projecting to produce a one, a two 
one hour programs on the GGR and we're not sure when they'll be released but uh, it's coming. We've, we've managed to capture everything we need to do that uh, but it's very expensive to do all the final post production so on and we're, we're after funding for that but uh, watch this space it will happen plus all the film footage will be put into a, a 46 minute uh, documentary just based on the film footage that was taken film against digital video so uh, so that'll happen and the book will definitely happen and it will definitely be out before christmas don't worry about that um i'm writing it and uh, um it's it's a classic it'll reveal some interesting background to uh, certain things along the way and during the course of the race it's uh, uh you know it's been a hell of an adventure it's not over yet and there's still people out there for uh, many months to come so uh, watch this space. So Noel de Bishop, um, uh, hi Don. Uh, is there actually a prize to be won? And if you are the first, or if you are the first, and beyond an entry, uh, the list of ex uh, beyond an entry. Uh, so yeah, just want to know what's what's to be won. Well, Boatshed, one of our partners that look after the back end of our website, Boatshed are a, a, a yacht brokerage all around the world. They obviously do their whole business based on you know websites with all their franchisees and people around the world so they're very good they've got very good people involved and they've been great for us because they've kept our our website functioning basically if there's ever a glitch or a problem we say hey what's going on boom boom because the numbers on the on the the website you know the following is like this and uh, um, so far it's been performing okay but on start day or day before the start uh, they came up and said hey we want to put down five thousand pounds for the first boat home that five thousand pounds sets a tradition. It was the tr it was the prize money in the first race in uh, the Sunday Times Golden Globe race in 1969 at the end. And as you probably may or may not know, uh, Donald Crowhurst was lost during the course of that event, and Robin was the winner of the five thousand pounds. But he actually gave that five thousand pounds to the family of Donald Crowhurst because they were in financial distress at that time because he he'd mortgaged that well he had some challenges put it that way so it was quite an amazing gesture for Robin and so that's now become a bit of a tradition you know started by Boatshed so Boatshed put up the five thousand pounds and there will be uh, a five thousand pound trophy uh, prize purse for the first winner of the 2022 edition don't know who's going to pay that yet or where we're going to find that money but but it's a tradition so there is that and the trophies are fantastic there is a perpetual trophy that's being produced for uh, uh, the golden globe which is a model of suhaley which is made from timber from suhaley that that robin managed to salvage during the refit so that's pretty cool and uh, and then there'll be other things as well we've got a well we've got a really interesting trophy for the for the first woman entrant in the ggr uh, which we'll announce uh, in the next couple of days um and uh, and there's other things as well other awards so yes but there's no huge prize money like a like hundred thousand dollars or or whatever it's really it's that sort of event you know you don't you don't do it for the money uh you just do it because you want to do it um so that's it um okay so uh roman uh, Puriat, Hi Don, uh, in sailing classes, we are taught to estimate position by dead reckoning every 30 minutes. Of course, not uh, that's not an option for solo sailors. Well, it is if they wanted to, they can still do that. So I'm curious what's a typical routine for solo sailors in regard to DR and fix uh, plotting over the course of a long journey. Thanks for organizing such a great event. Well, the reality is DR position becomes a bit loose when you're in the ocean and you're thousands of miles from land you don't have to be that particular but it's still very important um, if you're along the coast it's very important um, my experience uh, for sailing uh, circumnavigation was only back in 1990 and i actually had one of the very first available gps's at the time still had to do your qualifier with a sextant and so on um, so it was very simple tick it off but when I, my my um, example for when I did the bounty boat voyage, I did four thousand miles in an open rowboat, basically a whale boat, retracing William Bly in the mutiny on the bounty after the uh, uh, mutiny when he was um, ejected from the ship. Uh, we had nothing. We had a compass. We had the sextant to do meridian passage. It's a noon sight uh, for a latitude, but we worked very closely with DR, and all it is is just your course and your speed, and you keep make keeping up with that, and you can see where you're going to go. Um, I've got no idea what each of the skippers are doing, but I would imagine um, that whenever they're awake, if they're like Istvan doesn't have a log anymore, he lost his spinning um, spinner on the end of his trailing log, 
that they would estimate their speed whenever they're up. If I was up on the boat every hour, I'd look over the side, estimate the speed, put it down. Look at the course as best you can and put the course down every hour or maybe every two hours. It just, just It's up to them. But that gives you a reasonable indication. The challenge for these guys is they've got wind vanes, okay? And if there's the slightest wind shift, the boat is going to alter course and follow that wind shift. So it's very hard. If, you, if they go to sleep, they might go to sleep and the boat's heading over there. During the, the next two hours while they're sleeping, the wind may change direction that much, and so does their boat. So that, that creates some challenges. But they would do the best they can, and then every day that it goes on, they're getting less and less accurate, and they're looking for a sun site. Um, so, um, you know, it, it, everyone would be different. But in the ocean, yeah, you could go for a week without really knowing where you are because there's, you know there's nothing to hit and then you're just waiting to get that sun sight and then carry on from there. So um, so anyway, that's it. Um, okay, so we've got one here from uh, Kaj Modin. Hi, Don. Will the next uh, GGR22 start later, 1st of September, or perhaps uh, uh, to avoid um, Southern Ocean in early, you know, early uh, storm conditions or the North Atlantic later on? Well, yes, the race is starting later, uh, but the reason it's starting later um, is because we are in 2022 celebrating um, Bernard Matessier in Joshua um, as the next, you know, real interesting character in the in the GGR. The first one, this one, has been all about Sue Haley and Sir Robert Knox Johnson, and Joshua with Bernard left on August the 22nd from um, uh, from Plymouth in the UK. So we, let's assume, because nothing's definite, let's assume the race starts in France in 2022. It'll start on August the 21st. Uh, that's the closest, the Sunday afternoon. That's the closest we can get to the 22nd. So that puts us about seven weeks behind the current edition of the, the GGR. And uh, that will certainly, therefore, assist with uh, getting the boats down into the Southern Ocean later and also also letting them arrive here later. It's been a really quick trip. We never in our wildest dreams thought that we would be finishing the race in 210 days or something, or 200 days. And imagine what would have happened if Jean-Luc didn't damage his mast. He would have been here probably two or three weeks ago, <laughs> which would be very interesting indeed. So yes, yeah, so there is a delayed start next time, and, uh, uh, and it's all because of the fact that we're celebrating um, uh, Joshua. Having said that, uh, I can't imagine the dates then coming forward earlier uh, in 2026 and so on. Um, sounds crazy to think that, but I've got to tell you now, there are quite a few people out there that are actually preparing for 2026 GGR. It's, it's the, the interest is phenomenal. It's quite amazing. And uh, the number, another interesting statistic, uh, just got a message yesterday. Uh, we're running an average of one boat a week for the last four weeks that have been bought by people to enter the 2022 GGR and none of those four actually entered yet. So um, I think there's going to be a log jam later in the year when uh, people start putting in their, you know, these other people start putting in their entries. The interest is running very strong and some real characters as well. Um, okay, uh, last one here from Ingrid De Jong. Hi Don, uh, when can we see the films that the sailors have made? Well, no sailors have made any films yet, but they've shot films. And um, a really cool one, uh, which we put up on Facebook, was Mark Slatz's team, uh, Ellie Vanderbilt, uh, um, cut it to get cut his film footage, this is the Super 8 film footage, into a nine minute uh, clip, which is fantastic. You can scroll back through the, through the posts on Facebook and you'll find it there. Um, that's pretty good. And uh, of course, DHL have done some pretty amazing uh, uh, video clips of things. Uh, I haven't actually asked Susie if she got her video footage off the boat uh, when she had to abandon the boat. And the same with Gregor and so on, but we'll catch up with them later on, you know, when, when time's right and find out what goes on there. Certainly, um, uh, we are compiling all of the footage from all various bits and pieces, and that'll all come out later on in the doco and in some productions that we put together, um, you know, in the months ahead. But there's no distinct uh, plan uh, from any entrance yet because no one's really finished here. Jean Luc's coming in, he'll have some good footage, um, and uh, we'd expect to see some of that will we have a standard procedure that once we get their onboard footage we take a couple of minutes off straight away and we release that on what's called a VNR a video news release and that'll happen with Jean-Luc as soon as we've done that uh, probably we'll let the media have a bit of a go at it for a day or so before we put it up and then we'll put that that uh, clip up on uh, Facebook as well and on uh, GGR uh, YouTube so uh, I think that's pretty much it. So watch this space. It's all, um, all happening. Hard to believe that we're going to be finishing the race very soon. 
and um, if you it'll be great to see if you're coming down here the prize giving uh, just once again is going to be on in on april the 22nd which is easter monday here um I mentioned it before we can't say exactly what's happening partly because decisions have been made but the concept of a of a public you know making it available to anyone in the general public is is uh, more or less done so if you if you were planning to come down here uh, you would be able to be involved with the final um, uh, wrap up of the GGR uh, the prize giving and so on and um, and we're going to announce tomorrow an interesting scenario for those that are still watching this video um, where uh, if you are planning to come here uh, there's going to be a VIP couple that we can um, that will get a really uh, interesting experience, including uh, interacting and mixing with all the GGR people, the whole GGR team, and, and so on. So uh, watch out for that tomorrow on, on Facebook. We'll announce that and the way you, the way you can be chosen as a VIP couple. So um, thanks for that. We'll um, we'll see you in a few days. Oh, the other thing is John Luke's going to ring tomorrow. We set up for Jean-Luc to call in on SoundCloud, uh, so we'll get that up tomorrow as well, and he, that'll be his last phone in before he finishes, and he'll be talking about what's going on. He'll be probably right in the middle of the storm that's building. I don't know, uh, hopefully he can call. It's supposed to be calling sometime around 11 o'clock in the morning. Thanks a lot, see you later.